Hey guys, I'm uh, gonna try out experiment three today, and I just went through the uh, you know somewhat tedious task of finding all the correct parts for this thing, um, and the exercise uh, looks to be um, basically exploring you know how different uh, value resistors um, can impact. Um, you know, how much voltage uh, is dropped on the circuit and left for, you know, the actual load, like in this case, a simple LED. Um, so I just grabbed a bunch of uh, fresh uh, 1.5 volt batteries and uh, put them in this holder so they are in uh, series. So that means collectively we should have at least um, 6 volts, um, uh, you know, assuming these guys are all fresh. And uh, in terms of uh, resistor values, um, these guys uh, should be, which we'll confirm, are uh, 2K resistors, 2K ohms. And um, these guys should be 1K. And the last ones should be um, 470 ohms. So um, with that being said, let's start by just triple checking that the battery source um, is actually fresh as it should be otherwise we'll have to swap out a battery or two so since these wires are so small oftentimes it's best to just use them with a, with a uh, alligator clip because you're trying to kind of hold everything together which can be tricky Yeah, let's try this. Uh, let's try this pairing them up like that. Usually, you only need one one side clipped. You can kind of get away with the. There we go. Cool. So um, this is going to be direct uh, current voltage, and so I'm going to stop moving my wires. Should zero out. So we want to check if we get at least 6 volts. Yeah, 6.49 it looked like when I was holding it steady. Let's try that again. Cool. 6.49. So definitely uh, good on that end. Okay. And um, the other things we want to check real quick are that our resistors um, are what they say they are because I went through the trouble of uh, if you look really closely at these guys they all have colored stripes and uh, it's kind of a little system in place as the book describes to read these but they're still tricky so let's see here if I can kind of hold the leads on one of these oh, look at that so that's just a hair under 2k so that's our 2k's Let's try these guys out. These should be 1K, assuming everything went right. Uh, yep, just a hair under. And then these should be 470. Four sixty-four. So yeah, nothing's ever gonna be perfect, but they're about spot on. Um, okay, so that's that's cool. We're we're using the right uh, right components. So um, I think for this experiment, they wanted us to start with the most resistant, the most resistant uh, resistor we have. So I'm just going to pop one of these guys out. since I think we only need one of each of these guys. Alright, so there's one of those. So, um, we're basically going to do all this in a uh, series circuit. So, taking, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, um, the order of whether the resistor or the LED comes first, so long as um, you know the LED itself is put in the circuit correctly uh, in terms of which leg is longer. So the longer leg of an LED 
as far as I know, always is the leg that goes to the positive lead of your battery source or your power source. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that part first. We need to bend the legs of our LED out a little bit to be able to do this. All right. So let's start by start by grabbing. Oh, hold on. I think <laughs> make sure I got the long lead. Now that I said that. Yep. So this is the long lead. Harder to tell when you bend them. And we're gonna put. I'm gonna slip this little wire. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, these are definitely tricky to use because the wires are so skinny and these alligator clips are also a little slippery to work with. Okay. Oh, right. now I'm noticing we don't have great contact with the wire. Let's see if I can get that angled better. This is why I like using protoboards is so much more easy to deal with than using like no protoboard and just kind of clipping it all together, but I'll do exactly what the book is asking for now. Okay, that seems like that's pretty solid. So, uh, and then of course from here, we need to hook up uh, our resistor to the end of this guy because we're going to start off with using this, the strongest one and that will basically mean that there is a lot more voltage drop occurring um, oh, yeah these are very tricky to make sure you have solid contact I think, nope So lesson, <laughs> lesson to my viewers, try to use proto boards when possible. <laughs> this is uh, not very simple for making a um, stable contact. So because we're using our strongest resistor, the LED should be very dim. And we'll see if we can actually, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna try just using this one with my hands, cause trying to do all that with one hand would be very difficult. So, oh, there you go. So it actually is lighting up, but it's very dim. So yeah, in fact, you know what, just temporarily, I want to see if we can take a measurement to see how much voltage drop we're getting across. Okay, so he's lit up. I don't know if that's easy to see <laughs> on the camera, but he is lit up right now. So all I wanted to quickly do was check, I um, uh, wanted to do a little bit of voltage checking across basically the, let's start with the LED actually, because what LEDs usually operate on, uh, I think the voltage drop across an LED in terms of like how much um, uh, LEDs use uh, is about like two to three volts I think depends on the LED. So let's see if I can do this properly. I don't think I had it. So... one point nine volts. So that's actually pretty close to the two. And so that means if we've got a 6.4 volt supply and 1.9 if the voltage drop occurs here, the rest would be on the opposing side here. So that would be 
what, 4.5 volts, I think, that's dropped across this resistor. Yep, 4.5. So that's pretty cool. Exactly what we expected. And a pretty dim, uh, pretty dim LED. Now, needless to say, because um, the um, correct, um, you know, like a strong enough resistor is in play here, like nothing is even remotely warm. Um, but as we will see, let's go ahead and pop that out. Unfortunately, there's not a great way to do this without everything kind of just trying to attack your hands. Take this guy out. So this was our uh, 2K. And this should be our 1K. So now we're going to be um, dropping a lot less voltage. In fact, should be, I think, half the voltage across the resistor which will result in more voltage being available for the um, LED. So let's try this out again. Tricky to get this in there. Oh. Yes, I think as of the next experiment, I think we're finally on to just using proto boards, so that'll be good. So, um, although don't quote me on that, I haven't really looked too far ahead yet. Um, okay, so let's try this out again. And, uh, I don't really want to get my... There we go. So this time the light is definitely brighter. It's not, it's not amazing, but it's, uh, it's brighter. And uh, if we were to check the voltage across the light now, if I can do that, because it's things like floating in midair, so it's definitely tricky to do. Maybe I just touch the alligator tips, it'll be easier. So he's still got his correct amount of voltage, 1.9 volts. Right, I think I was misspeaking before. So it's not that the voltage <laughs> changes. We still want this resistor to have the same amount of voltage uh, across this thing. What we really want is uh, more current to be flowing through it. So right, so this should still be the same. Four point, yes, okay. Right, so when we talk about when we talk about changing in and out different resistors, what we're really impacting is you know the amount of current um, that is flowing through the uh, through the LED versus through the uh, resistor. Right, so I think uh, in my previous videos um, where I did some LED testing, I was really shooting for around. Um, 20 milliamps of current to flow through an LED to get it to about its about its peak brightness and I'm guessing um, right now that we have substantially less than that um, flowing through this guy. In fact, this is not part of the experiment but you know what, let's just give it a shot anyway. So we'll put this thing all the way over to direct current um, amp, oops, moved the wrong one. And um, we will measure it real quick. It's just a pain with this setup. But we'll give it a shot, because we're going to have to get right in the middle of the circuit. The easiest place to get in the middle is probably going to be, we'll just tap in over here. Because since this is one just big series, it doesn't really matter where we tap in, because current is constant across a series circuit. 
kind of like a hula hoop of marbles. Push a marble at one spot, and it's the same flow all the way around. So, um, we just need one more. Well, actually, we can probably... So the thing lights up once we touch, and we have only 0.005 amps, which is 5 milliamps. So yeah, we have substantially less than this LED probably wants to perform at peak, which is probably about four times the current. So if we're going to have the resistance with this next one from uh, 1K to like 470, which is you know, about having the resistance, then we should have at least, I would think, 10, 10 milliamps flowing through this, which probably is still only about, like we could probably drop down to like a 200 ohm resistor to get this thing fully flowing, but for the sake of sticking to the experiment, I'm going to go ahead and move that guy and use the 470s. Reattach this guy here. Yeah, trying to stick these little components in alligator clips is a massive pain, so I highly recommend using breadboards. Okay. Just about got it. So, um, let's see what happens when I touch. So this is the, right, so this is going to complete the circuit because we're tapping in to measure current right now. So that guy is substantially brighter now, isn't he? Um, let's see here. So he's quite a bit brighter. And he's got right about where I guessed actually. Nine to, yeah, nine to ten. Uh, milliamps. So he's about at half brightness here. So yeah, if we were to take a, you know, like a 200 and 235, <laughs> assuming we had that exact denomination ohm resistor, um, this would be um, probably running at, you know, full brightness. And uh, yeah. So anyway, the principle I think for this experiment was, hey, the more we dropped our <laughs> Um, the more we dropped our resistors, uh, the more current was allowed to flow through the circuit, which uh, then uh, increased the brightness of our LEDs.